Now we get to the equilibrium point or the profit maximizing point for all imperfectly competitive firms. Well, the rule is always the same. Profit maximizing rule is marginal revenue equals marginal cost. That will give us the profit maximizing quantity that the firm should produce. So here we have our marginal revenue curve, and here we have our marginal cost curve. We go to the point at which they intersect. Okay. That gives us our profit maximizing quantity. Let's call it six. It's about where we had drawn the number six before. Now, to discover what is the price that the profit maximizing firm will sell this six units, we have to go not across from this point to the price axis, but we have to go up to the demand curve. The demand curve tells us what consumers are willing to pay for six units of this particular good. And so from the demand curve, we then go over to the price axis and we'll say that the price that consumers are willing to pay is $9 per unit when six units are offered for sale. So, the question is, do the imperfectly competitive firms earn an economic profit? Well, what we learned is in the perfectly competitive markets, it's possible for firms to earn economic profits in the short run, but then firms will enter the industry, we've entered the long run, and in the long run, the firms will lose their economic profits and they will settle in at an equilibrium point uh, where only a normal profit is being earned. Well, with this example, what do we see? We see that the firm's total revenue is six units at nine dollars. So total revenue is equal to fifty-four dollars. Well, to determine whether this firm is earning an economic profit, we need to understand the firm's cost. Well, at six units, what is the per unit cost? To discover that, we live vertically here at six units after the profit maximizing output, and we follow that up to the average total cost curve. That's the per unit cost. We bring that over to our price cost axis, and let's call it $7. That tells us that when producing six units, the per unit cost to the firm is $7. In other words, the total cost to the firm is 6 times 7, which is $42. So is this firm earning economic profits? The answer is yes, and the amount is total revenue minus total cost, $54 minus $42, which is $12 of economic profit. Now, that is going to be this area right here, this rectangle. This is our economic profit. If we were to label this A, B, C, D, that rectangle A, B, C, D would be our total revenue. Barrel, please contact the main office. Barrel, please contact the main office. It would be our total revenue rectangle. If we were to put points E and F here, then A, E, F, D, that would be our total cost rectangle. And this area, that is the difference, rectangle B, C, F, E, would be our economic profit rectangle. The vertical distance between points C and F is 9 minus 7, which is $2. The horizontal dif distance between points E and F, that's our quantity of 6 units. 2 times 6 would give us 12, and that is our economic profit. Now, as far as the different forms of imperfectly competitive markets, it should be noted that if we were taking the time to differentiate between the three, all would basically look like this in the short run. That is, monopolistically competitive firms, uh, oligopolistic firms, and monopolistic firms would have this picture or something very similar in the short run. The only exception here is in the long run for oligopoly firms. Oligopoly firms, I'm sorry, for monopolistically competitive firms. In the long run, there is relative ease of entry into those particular markets that are monopolistically competitive. So that would actually increase uh, the supply in the industry, reducing the equilibrium price and each individual firm's share of demand. And so though the demand curve would continue to have a negative slope, it would be reduced and it would eliminate the monopolistically competitive firm's economic profits in the long run. But for a basic 
fundamental understanding of profit maximization, the graphical representation, and imperfectly competitive markets, this would suffice.